Okay, third and final map here to see which of these two teams will continue their run in the ESL Challenger Melbourne Closed Qualifier tomorrow and which one of these teams will have their run cut short. Man, you don't want to get eliminated on day one, brother. It's a little bit of an embarrassment, to say the least, to, to never get the callback for day two, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it'll be interesting to see how things transpire. Aurora's have, have actually already played this map in this tournament. They played it against fours in the first um, best of three. And they lost 13-9, six rounds on the uh, on the T side and three rounds on the CT side. So starting on the CT side, we'll see how things go. Lackey with Will Berettis, he's opening things up nicely. But in the first, Bellon, Elkanaka had a complete brain fart trying to do that. But meanwhile, <laughs> Lackey's just farting over everyone at this stage. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's dropping the hammer with those Julie's Glory. At least going to be able to get himself a kill back. They need to be careful. Thankfully for them, he does run out of ammo, which means he's an easy tap down. Belchenok with a good double, Lackey with an important triple kill there as well. I mean, Aurora did find some really good form towards the end of Mirage, and if they can carry that form from the end of Mirage into the start of Overpass here, CT side, they're going to be really happy. Yeah, that's for sure, that's for sure. I said uh, previously that I think winning the knife round is super important because of the CT start. But well, you uh, didn't the just stats say super important, about... you said that no, they'll said win the whole series map. Series winning. Yeah, yeah. series winning. Which I think is a little bit interesting because Aurora, they've got a 51% CT round win percentage. And uh, Xenada actually have a 67 round win percentage on the T side. Ooh, what's and the CT percentage? 41%. Okay. So not, 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 not fancy. And the we are only working size? with, with four Xenada. maps okay, and, and four maps amongst the two of them. I but mean, the sample enough. size for Xenada, yeah. DMS, Godsent, and Aurora are in those three. Um, and for Aurora, it's obviously X and Ada when they played each other on the 17th of February, two weeks ago, plus minus, call me a liar for a couple of days. And that was a 13-9 <laughs> victory to Aurora. So okay. they know each other's tendencies. They played each other on this map before. They obviously prepared for each other on this map before. So it can honestly go either way. I would predict Aurora, to be honest with you. I mean, I just, I really liked what I saw towards the end of Mirage. It seemed like they were getting their act together. Deco was starting to come online as well. I expect him to be a big contributor, a big factor here on the CT side as well with his orb. Once that, that gets going, I mean, Nick, you would know as an IGL, it really is a dream to have an AWPer who likes to take initiative on this map, both T side, but especially on the CT side, right? You can almost take the, the second seat in terms of calling on the CT side of this map, and you can kind of let your AWPer dictate the setups you're going to employ. Yeah, I think uh, one of the main rule of thumbs I've played with is to overpass at the map that tends to stop an open cup. Post, shoot, yeah, exactly. Yeah, rinse and repeat, yeah. Next angle, etc. It's a map that really lends itself towards an active AWP. Deco, he has everything but an AWP this round. He's got a UMP playing close up towards bathroom, so we'll see how I choose to play around that. Four man towards B starts early, and Deco being the solo player towards A. X and Ada just taking some shape right now, been able to get some control in towards lowers, working in towards party as well. Couple players outside the monster tunnel. Probably gonna converge in towards water soon enough. Lucky, lucky to be alive right now. Bit of a lazy jiggle overexposing himself. It is certainly a bonus round for the CT side. Deco could find some favorable timing, but up against the AK was always gonna be tough. Yeah, that's for sure. And the UMP just ain't the gun it used to be, eh? Back in the days, eh? The UMP oh, used to be a rifle. Used to be a twelve hundred dollar rifle. Yeah. That was one of the best uh, metas. That was a long time ago, man. I don't know if I agree with that, Nick. There were AKs <laughs> that were struggling to go up against the UMP, man. Twelve hundred. On cash, dude. Yo. That's crazy. Cash headshot with the UMP. That was the place to be. I mean, if we're talking metas, Trig has got to be the worst meta, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, well, actually, I know this. I don't think this is actually controversial. I don't know how many people consider it a meta, but the R8 when it no, first it got released. No, it wasn't a meta. I mean, it was like three yeah. days. It was like days. three days, yeah. yeah. But the, mean, the, the Krieg org meta was for sure. Because that lasted far the worst. 11 months or something like that, maybe even longer. Yeah. I mean, there were a bunch yeah. of players who were like, I'm not going to play with the Krieg and get used to it because it's going to get nerfed soon. And then Nico. nine months later, Brolin was like the third best player in the world. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was interesting to see a bit of a different approach. Um, 
with different guns because obviously you just yeah, you just see fun. AKM4s all the time. But when they're that strong, it's a little bit different. Like the Krieg spray was so easy. Like the first, I think nine bullets were just down to the left with yeah. no variation at all. Makes things a little bit difficult, but it's nice to spice things up a little bit. I think the I... the old orc was also pretty strong, where it was, where you could walk super fast with oh, it. That of was course. also pretty strong. I mean, that was like the that was Kenny S. Kenny S. Nerf, of course. Yeah. You know, people say was... oh, the donk nerf has come through, and I think that was just like way overused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His advantage was always going to get nerfed. He was just the one who was probably using it the most effectively, and he didn't even get nerfed after the, the patch. So yeah, Donk does something that a lot of people should do. Donk plays every round like he's got 400 HP. He peaks everything like he's 100 HP, yeah, and he's got convicted. ready to take the next fight. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You need that confidence to take these kills. Couldn't agree more. I think that is a really important point. Either way, this is a really important round. Open play for Deco. Rifles outside of that bar, Belchinok. Are you upgrading if you're Belchinok when you've got that money to your name? Are you sticking the MP9? I think MP9 is super viable on overpass. Close monster, close short, really yeah. strong. I don't mind it. I think the Especially MP9 the is better rifles, than a FAMAS. I think if there was like two MP9s, then it could be a lot more of a liability. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Either way, they do find the opening pick courtesy of their Orpa, who's been in task with controlling that A bomb site. They've actually pulled two rotations up, so the B side's looking fairly weak right now. This is the MP9, and it's only going to be good for damage. Down to 3 HP though, and a well-placed HE means that Paul Vandana's going to lose his life, and it turns... comes out as to where the lackey's going to pin that HE. He's doing it exactly that. Is it a Kobe? Of course it is. Zolterovsky's tagged down to 24, and <laughs> lackey's playing hopscotch in water. Oh, He's no. not able to win the gunfight. Both very low HP, 39 points of health between the two of them. Same comp he said about Norway and Deco. Full HP and Norway's gonna try to push the issue. He ran out of ammo there with the A1S. That's what betrayed him. The 20 bullet magazine. Though he's in a really good position though. Not forcing the issue at all. So patient. Buria never gonna expect this first drive to free. Soltovsky so low. Should follow suit and he does. I love the patience there from Norway, right? It's not pushing down, getting kill hungry, hoping to, you know, catch them with their back turned. Patient game pays dividends. That's facts on facts. That was the first real like gun round on the board, right? You said the other round was pretty much a bonus round. Yeah. So you can chalk it off. Maybe it's 1-1 one, one, depending on how you look at it. Maybe it's 1-0 depending on how you look at it. But we'll see how the rounds choose to transpire after that. Lackey's actually chosen to upgrade. Or rather, there's no MP9s and he's chosen the FAMAS. I still think the MP9's better than the FAMAS, especially on the B-bomb side, face close. And this is something you can't be doing if you're ex -nator. 20 seconds into the round, even less, 15 seconds into the round, 4v5. And this is why Overpass is such a strong map for the CTs. You lose that opening default towards A, now all of a sudden you've lost a full belt of utility, let alone losing a player. So it becomes yeah. super difficult for ex to claw this round back. Well, what's the protocol there, Nick? Just flash over the top? Can't afford to run out dry, right? Exactly, exactly. Even when you think you're beating the guy, rather wait for the flash to pop. Yeah, you can't maybe gamble. Cross over. Yeah. If Deco has front spawn. He gets there first day every. Uh, gets there first every day of the week. They're going to continue to aggress, which isn't entirely necessary considering they've got the man advantage. But works out. Five versus three. Aurora Gaming don't need to do anything further in the round from here. That's a fact. You can literally just sit and wait. One thing that I do say is I think. Maybe Norway should be jump spotting towards A. Don't let them get too up close and personal, especially when there's three guys left. You can play three towards B, two towards A. Just make sure you have a flash and the B rotator to flash above the jump up area to delay any super fast rush towards A. But even now, 5v3, I think maybe is the plan to save. I would assume so. No real point for the bomb to be towards B and two guys towards A. I think they're just going to save the rifles, cut their losses. Maybe get a couple tech nines on the on Kenzie Saw and Paul Bandana next round. Otherwise, pretty comprehensive start coming out from Aurora, I would say. Absolutely. I mean more of the same compared to what we saw at the end of Mirage as well. Having said that, strong starts to halves is the name of the game for Aurora. Can they keep it up is more of the question. I found I found these these round endings when it's dead quiet and you just hear the counter terrorist win. It, it's it's very tranquil. You know when the T's yeah. win the round it's it's chaotic, it's a bomb exploding. Whereas when the CTs lose the round like that, it's nice and Oh the T's rather lose the round like that, it's it's quiet, you know. You just hear the, the dinging of the train moving across. If you're in front of you just hear the guitar music playing. It's, 
quite peaceful. You know, Counter Strike yeah, isn't tranquil. all about uh, shooting and killing, eh? It's true, Nick. We just yeah. band together. Dude, does it have to be all about war? No, disagree. No ways. Well, between Aurora and X, and Nader certainly does. There's only one spot at Melbourne, Nick. And we have to find a way to separate the competition. Battle Sorry, to the brother. death. <laughs> exactly. That's what it's about. Belchnock, he wants to swing up the back of the flash. He will. He's in a lot of trouble. Oh. Does he get out alive? He does not. Lackey also MP9 goes down it. to the MAC-10. I can't believe how it just eats them up like that. MP9 wins it every day. That's what I'm saying. I'll die on that hill. <laughs> Famous well, is one of the did. worst guns in the game. Yeah. And now Give they're going to gamble again. Over FMS. No, I'm kidding. no, you don't mean that. You're just, <laughs> you're just speaking crazy now, Nick. I'm, wonder, I'm trying to think of ways in which Xenator can fumble the bag. Maybe I mean, going A. Yeah, yeah. That's the only way, and it's not going to happen. Aurora have again gone for the gamble. I mean, this is certainly a tendency that they've thrown a couple times. Norway's just trying to flex his muscles, like, guys, we're we're here at B, we're stacked up, I'm, I'm spamming smokes and everything, don't I, I come here. I still think this is bad, because the the orb towards A, you can rotate heaven super quick, maybe they should have done They're that gonna, 10 seconds ago. They're not going to try, they don't even to go for the sake. Get a kill to smoke, right. you can fish. You can yeah, always you fish. To, then. You need a free frag if there's going to be any motivation. Nades are way too late, what's going on there, lads? We'll get one for three. Deco has to hold. He needed to be holding left side pillar there when Kenzie pushes forward because then he gets a follow up frag for free. That would unlock the retake. I don't really like the fact they go for that. I like the gamble yeah. stack. You're down by a player, three players A. Accept your fate, carry the guns through. Yeah, they fished for a little too long there. We're a bit, uh, a bit greedy. A shot. Nothing. Yeah, they caught, they caught, uh, what's not, not nice to. They caught a puffer fish. Or seaweed, maybe? Seaweed, yeah. Or somebody else's lion. That's never nice. That sucks. The back of your mate's head, you know. That's never nice as well. Yeah, like maybe catch, you know, in between the fingers or something like that. Oh, the on the webs? Yeah. Not nice. Not nice. Underneath the nail? <laughs> oh, Ooh, that's tough. Nice, nice. <laughs> I like that one. Someone's big toe. Ticklish. Important That's round here for Aurora Gaming to maintain control, Nick, because there's no money if they lose this one. They're in the driver's seat as things stand, but we know T-side of Overpass can be a grind. However, the stats, the stats paint a different picture. In fact, on paper, this should be the most competitive half of the map, right? Because both teams are on their favorable side. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. See how things choose to transpire afterwards. And Aurora often have gone towards this 4B lean to start with. Maybe they're expecting some sort of pace change coming out from Exonator, sort of B pop, B rush, short pop early in the in the in the in the round, but choosing to rather play three towards A now, pushing and putting the map quite nicely. Oh, we're gonna see a lot of kills in the feed. Just comes down to whether it's gonna be brown and blue or blue and brown. Man can't believe the cluster of players on top of each other right now. Who takes first contact is the question. They have to maintain really good composure to the situation to the CT side. Belchnock does a world of damage, but nothing fatal. Nor we certainly oh. will, though. Great triple kill coming through from him. He has been bypassed, though. Problem is, Kenzie saw so ridiculously low. How much can he even do from this position? Kenzie, well, he'll chime in with the frag of his own. And Norway completes the round with a quad kill. Yeah, the joke over towards A there was super strong. MP9, close angles like that, eats the players up. Even though he didn't get any frags, he did so much damage. Really, really good round coming out from Aurora. And it just comes down to reading the situation a bit. You know, like, okay, you're not playing for short control, so you're playing three towards A. Play super slow, do Xenator towards that mid-default. Shifting, making sure they're not giving out any unnecessary sound cues. And... They're left scratching their heads. They're wondering what read does Aurora have to have that sort of setup. And I doubt we're going to see something similar. There we see this round. You see, you get caught up by the mid peak once. Never again. Never going to happen again. <laughs> well, at least learning. That's what it's about, right? Taking in data and changing your approach in the future. X and Ada don't have much going for them right now, right now though. Nick, if they lose this 6 2 and eco round after that 7 2, things really start to fall apart at that stage. And they're running out of utility here as well. One smoke left remaining, three flashes to try and get into a bomb site. That's going to be tough. 
Yeah, I just think if you're Aurora, you need to be getting some sort of map control. It needs to be a flash short in this timing to get info or cheat up towards A or gamble of some sort. They flash clearing monster, and on that timing, Norby should tuck tail, head up towards that A bomb side, and it does actually look like he's going to catch the timing soon, while Deco gets the opening frag, and all of a sudden, now there's three players here for the CT side. If you're Exonator, like, what do you do this round? You're looking at smokes, you've got nothing to do. Yeah, you've got nothing going your way right now. You just have to rely on the brute force approach. You just hope that numbers running forward are able to get the necessary kills. They still have two flashes, but they've got no one in a forward position to try and springboard their way into the bomb site. Deco's here with the York support of Kenzie. Oh man, sure, the Shadow, I think, or something. Has he? Yeah, there we go. He's gonna clear it out. Frag for free, and Deco's just holding the line towards long. I mean, there's 20 seconds left. You don't really want to stay alive here as Exonator either. I mean. Maybe you do carrying the rifles through Deco. Could be on for a collateral, but he could be in a lot of trouble as well. He's not considering long at all right now. Oh my god, Nick. What? They found a way just in time. Fumbled the bag. Name of the game for Aurora right now. Comes down to whether they give up any frags to Exnader. Aurora is just going to save. No Actually, ways. no, they're not. They've got two people flanking. Soltovsky. Is he able to hit the shot? Surely a jiggle's gonna come out. There it is, he misses. Gets the frag. Now it's the, the retakers on. Lackey and Norwe have got a kit. Norwe knows that they might start pushing the issue towards his area of the map, and he's just gonna post an angle. Are they gonna walk into him? He actually looks away at the wrong time, but meanwhile, the kill goes the way. It's no. not planned for him. He can tap the bomb. The peak's gonna come out, but he doesn't have the kit. Lackey's low HP, sticking the bomb. He gets the first, and Paul Bandana is able to get the second. Oh my goodness, Aurora didn't fumble the bag once, didn't fumble the bag twice, but they fumbled it three times in one round. I can't believe that X and Ada are actually able to get across the line there. That could do some serious damage to Aurora's mental state, man. They had everything going there. There was just eight seconds left on the clock. Two players creeping their way up long. I mean, Norwe was in bathrooms or he was watching, or Kenzie was watching bathrooms. Deco's just getting lazy there, man. He doesn't have to look in that direction at all. His job is long. Oh, Aurora, long gone from the round. That's devastating for their campaign because that was going to break Exonator's economy as well. That was the round where they could really start to run away with the half, but not to be. Not to be, not to be. Also not he the lower door, so... Not able to get that extra info. Maybe the he got a lot of timing. Maybe not. Oh man, I mean this is a huge round for both of these teams because they've both broken the piggy bank to afford everything they've bought up here. Remember, there's only one out of the ten players who stayed alive in the previous round. Aurora, they've gone for a gamble stack. They've uh, maybe <laughs> had a bit of an overcorrection here. Nick, now two players hard committed towards long. A oh, Paul is walking on monster. Kenzie might catch Dalton him in Dalton retreat. Paths. There's two players there for the CT side. And Kenzie's in a great position. He's getting audio cues for days. No. Good HE. Great HE. What? Yeah, that does a lot of damage. Most damage I've seen the HE do in a while. Dalchnok has to stay alive here because he's taking the attention away from Lackey. Lackey is the one who can do the damage from here. 32 seconds on the clock. I feel like Aurora should know exactly what's going on. Rotation's coming through thick and fast, but don't count X and Ada out of it. Nate. Yeah, there we go. Three players now out of monsters. Really tough. Exonator not being afforded anything right now. Running into a brick wall on this B bomb site. And, well, I think Aurora are going to breathe a massive sigh of relief as they set the defense up nicely on that B bomb site. Yeah, I mean, the, the three man setup that was really good. There was a chance Lackey could have got caught out on a timing where he just chose to swing towards that toxic area. Maybe that player short if he was looking instead of like. I think he was getting ready for a flash to peek over towards bridge or ABC or something like this, but looking the wrong way and Lackey was able to get away with his life and for the most part, pretty coin flippy rounds. They seem to ebb and flow. Seems to be a lot of space taken from Paul Bandana towards towards B. Then he gets found out, then that missed spray, I think, from Kensi when they're trying to go back down towards lower, but he does really good damage with the HE. And then Aurora just end up cleaning it up and they're actually forcing this. They're choosing to full invest. Maybe because the last bonus was only 1.4 in the previous, but... Or 1. Yeah, 1.4 in the previous, now it's 1.9. Yeah. 
I don't know. Well, no the way head I on see these guys as well is that Aurora have been given another opportunity at life in a way because it's kind of the same opportunity they had presented to them in the round before the previous, right? Where they, they dropped the ball. Because again, now it's you win the 7 3 anti eco 8 3 and then you dominate the game. But Exonator, they're going for a set play here, man. This is something that you work in the offline server, right? You can Triple try it on this 100 times. Triple H. Oh, I got excited there. Shawn Michaels, Randy Orton. I know WWE. Either way, X and Ada looking to get in towards the bomb site. Have lost a player off the bat. Lackey up close to using the smoke to his back, back but he'll still lose his life out. Oh, and now it just comes down to where's the utility place from Norway and Echo. Wait for the smokes to clear. There's a good HE on the default, and actually he's killed through the smoke. Is Kanzi Saw. Oh man, this is a really important retake for Aurora right now. They've got a massive weaponry advantage. They've got a kit on two of their players, a smoke grenade. See the flash, can see. That's gone in towards short. Yeah, I. Uh, everybody's looking blinded up right now, but they still continue to get the kills as they close the gap. And Kenzie will find himself an important multi. No way Soltovsky can do anything with the P250. Has to accept his fate, staying alive. Not going to matter, obviously, as long as he. Yeah, it doesn't cause too much trouble. All's well and ends well. Seven three for Aurora and X and Ada are going to have to eco. Looking like an A3, looking like a 9-3, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe, we'll see what happens. Xnedo showing flurries of brilliance, same as Aurora. But it just looks like it might be the CT aspect of the map that's playing into Aurora's hands. But pretty solid from both teams coming out from this. Maybe the scoreline isn't completely a, an accurate representation of how this half is going so far. Then there's been a couple rounds that have come down to the wire. Oh, Soltovsky. Soltovsky. With the P250 and Kevlar, is he able to get any frags, I wonder? I'm gonna say none. Soltovsky? How many frags yeah. he's getting? Zero. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, so that's a, a moot point, Nick. Oh wait, hold on. I've changed my answer. He's gonna get one. He's gonna get one, isn't he? Go on, lad. I need to make this 2-2. Two, two. Come on, Soltovsky. Yes! He's going for oh, the, the knife, knife even! Thing. Oh yes, oh. that's an AWP. But he can't get anything more. Can he potentially? I mean, he's been able to scurry away. Footsteps heard. Kenzie's tracking him, hunting him. I know exactly where Soltovsky is. He's going to go straight into Deco's scope. And there we go. Job done. Really important round there for Aurora. Make sure they get it done clean, cleanly. And that knife actually changes the whole dynamic. Now he can afford an AWP, like you said. Yeah, he wouldn't true. have had an AWP if he didn't get that knife. Now let's watch the orb closely and see what impact it has, right? We can continue the butterfly effect and see how it impacts this next round. Imagine they just rush B. <laughs> Soltovsky <Sultan's laughs> can 1v5 after they rush B. Uh, I, have a, I have a sneaky suspicion that's not going to be what the IGL calls here, considering he has the orb. Let's see what magic he can work over towards a Deco against Soltovsky, the battle of the titans so far this series. Flash is good enough. Oh, oh not able no. to readjust in time. Oh, yikes. There goes the AWP. Coming through Monster. What's your thoughts on 9-3, Nick? In fact, hold that point because we've got a big exec as you say. Exonator able to get himself in towards the B bomb site. Lackey, the first point of contact. He got the jump on his opponent, but couldn't get the kill. Deco only good for a single frag as well. Wide swing coming through from him after he takes contact the first time. Buria will find the plant behind the sandbags and a fresh smoke is going to be frustrating for Norway to try and deal with. Recovers the flash. Retake is on the cards. I think two are going to go ABC with the molly towards defaults and flash out of heaven. That's what I would assume is going to happen. But there is a boost in towards heaven, which might be something that's completely overlooked. Has to be, right? It's such a strong position to have as the T side and the post plant. You're never going to expect that as the CT as you make your way forward. And there we go. Kills come through immediately. Vital round one by Exonator. We're going to have to wait for the break to see if it's enough, though.
it's so blinding It's on the ceiling and the walls Where is my name? Cause I can't find it Those early memory link walls Okay, the final half of the evening. Assuming, Mr. Nick, we don't go to overtime here between Aurora and X and A, do you think there's any chance of that? I think there's a fair chance of that. I think we were talking about the statistics before. The T side of X and Ada was their strongest side, and the CT side of Aurora was their strongest side. And now it's been flipped a bit, so it really could go either way. I think this pistol is gonna gonna tell a lot about what's gonna happen in the rest of the of the of the game. And looks like it's going to be a lot of a lot of action right from the get-go. Yeah, numbers in towards lowest for X and Ada, and obviously the thought process is is that whether the opponents go B or A, you've got a very quick rotation to try and put pressure on them immediately. However, Aurora Gaming have employed sort of the one antidote to the setup being employed by the CT side, and that's the push towards long footsteps should be heard here by Munch, and he's going to fall back into bathrooms. He's like, guys, I am a little bit concerned about long right now. Excuse me, it's actually Soltovsky who's there in the bathrooms. A uh, big fight breaking out in low as Belchnock about to run out of ammo. He won't get a single kill before he does. At least Echo gets a frag, which kind of unlocks a safe bomb site. Norby's he's got a lot of players behind him, so he can't try and find the trade. My god, he's in the belly of the beast right now, and he's oh thinking, no way, Norby! What? He's gonna be able to find all four frags! Barely any bullets in the magazine, but he still knocks it down. 13 for 4. Norby's no longer st st sitting down, rather, he's standing up. Norwee, what a round coming out from him. Four kills with the Glock. Up close and personal. And you thought that pistol round was going to go all the way of X and Ada. And like even took calling a tactical timeout. Because surely they're going to force into this. The, the previous round was going to go their way. But maybe they're going to say, mate, it's best to rather postpone the gun round. Stomach the full oh eco my. in this one. Get M4s up in the next. Considering it's going to be 10-4. And if you lose the force by 11-4. We're not talking about even 11 for Zonic Laws half. We're talking about two no, more rounds no. for Aurora to win the game. That Law's dead and gone. Disaster. Absolute disaster. I can't believe how he was able to get all those kills. I thought he was going to run out of ammo. He had barely any health to work with. I mean, it was such an awkward position to be in because he wanted to try and get the kill on Soltovsky, who was applying all the pressure on his teammates crossing from long, but he couldn't swing out because of the players coming through from lowers. My he computed goodness. that situation so well, didn't he? Yeah, and the fact that he was able to get that first kill instantly and make it like three more players around his area rather than that duel taking his time because then allows the CTs to gallop up closer to him and allows that player close divider to swivel and pivot 180 and then 
try to do some extra damage. He gets that insta kill firstly and then able to readjust. And I think he maybe last or second last bullet in the Glock magazine able to finish things out. So fantastic coming out from him. Even though it's a full USP stack towards middle, it should be for Belchnock to eat. How many does he get? Three. Belchnock? You say three? Okay, I'll go with one. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, he's spotting them all. He's spotting them all. Now, Normie's oh. running. Normie wants the Ecos. Mine, mine, mine. One? <laughs> no, he... Belchnock hasn't got any. There he's we got go. One. He's got one. He's got two. <laughs> Did you say two? I said three. I said three. No. Said one. <laughs> okay, oh, that was all right again. Oh. Aurora Gaming get themselves up to double digits though, which is phenomenal for their campaign. Um, obviously, a very clean anti-eco means a good boost for their economy. And it's all or nothing now for X and Ada. They've got the AWP in play. They've got all the rifles they require outside of that, Nick. Remember, this is their lives on the line right now. If they lose this match, they're out of contention for Melbourne. One thing that Aurora might not be expecting is an AWP perched up this early. Maybe they have no idea that that's the case. See if you can work the magic towards middle. One thing that Aurora do know is that any pieces of utility that X and Ada do throw, they'll be thin in that department. So it's always best, excuse me, in these rounds to play a little bit slower. Use the utility a bit more to gain map control. No real re need to contact into areas. Rather play the utility game pretty well. And with that being said, X and Ada actually from the start of the round, they've been pretty stubborn with their utility. They didn't smoke deep monster. They didn't throw too many mollies towards that area. So they still got four smokes on the on the on the belts. Gonna play it super slow and see how the round transpires afterwards. working as a unit right now that's the mentality pack based as they make their way across the board in towards lowers one player outside of monster all hell about to break loose on that b bomb side x and are not really too well poised to deal with this does look like kenzie source rotating down just in time at least considering it and he should arrive on the scene in time here to impact the defense. Aurora Gaming, four players emerging out of Monster. They've been able to get out of Monster, but that's not the real str struggle. The real challenge is to try and find control of the bomb site and then find a way to plant from there. They're able to trade their way forward, but that's the kill there. That's the frag that separates the two teams. The kill Kenzie gets because now it's man advantage and space created for the plant. Free smoke in heaven comes in. He's actually killed through the bot. Or actually, rather, he's shoulder peeking out. Lackey peeks up. He gets dinked. But he's able to take down Kenzie Saw and out Soltovsky in the 1v2. He's got the USP out. He knows that Lackey's low HP, but he's wondering, where's Kenzie? Kenzie's holding the long line and great stuff coming out from Aurora. And that round might just be the nail in the coffin, right? You're staring at 12 in the face if you're Aurora Gaming. X and Ada, the back could not be more up against the wall. Yeah, I also just love the way Kenzie comes through to support Norway because Soltovsky knows how low the close player is, just wants to swing with the USP to try and force that frag. But if he swings wide with the USP, he's an absolute dead man to the uh, player at range, right, with the AK. 11-4 Aurora Gaming. They finally found their footing, Nick. It's been so sluggish from them and stop-start throughout this series, but... It's really come together for them on overpass. I mean, there's only the one round I can think of where it looked very sloppy, and that was where they lost to the force by right, where Deco wasn't clearing long properly. But outside of that, really solid performance coming through from Aurora on overpass. Yeah, that's for sure. If it's not a hospital, it's a... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clinic, baby. A, uh, I was going to say it's a funeral. But I don't know well, that would have worked as well. A morgue <laughs> could have gone for that. I mean, there were yeah. a few options, I suppose. Maybe it's I late though, Nick. Birthday party. It's late and it's been long. It's <laughs> Probably wouldn't have been the most appropriate response, no. Yeah, maybe not. It's like a raw shark test. What's the first thing that comes to <laughs> mind when I say hospital and then Nick says a birthday party? <laughs> <laughs> be pretty depressing, man. That would be quite sad. <laughs> As is this game for X and uh, Nader, rather, especially after they won the first map the way they did, man. I was expecting bigger things out of them, Nick. Yeah. Don't know how many people would have predicted a reverse sweep coming into it. Maybe a fair amount, because I mean, Aurora were favourites, losing okay, their map big at the start. Let's talk about this. 
I don't really gel with the whole reverse sweep terminology in a best of three. <laughs> I mean, I get it. You know, you lost the first map one, then they But it's not that big of a deal, y'all. It's the BO5. That's where the reverse sweep is like a real deal, man. Yeah. That's that's where it's legit. I guess it's just the technicality of the of the term, yes. right? So sure, sure. Losing the first and then coming back thereafter. Which I, I agree with you. I think for a best of three, if you're a professional team, it's very easy to reset. And if it isn't, then you're doing something wrong. Like yeah, you you're, you have to be a professional, right? Yeah, exactly for sure. A best of five, it's different. Anything? He what did you say, sorry? There. I'm not sure if Buria carried anything through there because he died to the bomb explosion. No, I think the Mac 10 died towards B, so. Okay. It's all well good. Ends well. Trying to save the Kevlar. Is it 13-4 final score? Well, I'm hoping not, Nick. I'm hoping to see some sort of a resurgence from X and Ada. CT side, they've got the AWP again. I mean, they fell flat on the previous gun run. It's not even like Aurora did anything particularly special. Oh, no. Untimely Last one. Stroke. What the hell's that? <laughs> <laughs> You'd expect these sort of rounds at this point in the series. First man's bypassed him. Oh, first kill. Gonna go the way of Norway. And Lackey's already got another one. Kenzie saw wow. behind the smoke. He's gonna push the issue. Lackey is dropped, but he does know there's a couple other players around the corner. He's gonna pivot 180 and get that next kill onto Norway. And he's gonna carry on pushing the issue. Now they're gonna go up towards the A-bomb site and can Kenzie saw be the nail in the coffin for this round for Aurora on the I mean flag. they have to be accounting for this. They have to be prepared for this. Belchnock is gonna get the kill onto the A-side player. Kenzie saw continues to do everything he possibly can to keep his team in it, but unfortunately it could still be in vain. A two versus one here. Munch left alone, Nick. He's only gotten four kills throughout the map so far. Has to get 50% of that kill count here in this round alone. First comes through for free. Belchnock, is he out in the open? Well, he's kind of trying to use the edge of the smoke. It doesn't oh. look great, but he will still get the kill anyway. Game and that is that. Dover. Aurora Gaming have done it, Nick. They've kept themselves alive. And fortunately for X and Ada, it is the end of the run here on day one nonetheless. I mean, I'm just saying, I said everyone's the knife runner was the game. And I was true enough. Right. So...